Glasgow design duo Timorous Beasties were nominated for Designer of the Year 2005. They've made quite a name for themselves by dragging the traditional area of fabric and wallpaper into the 21st century. Back in the 90s, we certainly felt like kind of design lepers, you know. Uh, you know, if you said that you were working on wallpaper, you know, people, you know, would kind of, you know, back off from you as though you were disease-ridden. Their Glasgow toile, although traditional in style, caused national controversy by showing less salubrious images of their city. Their work is hand-printed on the finest quality papers and materials. Timorous beasties do sit in the Scottish design tradition, which is the oldest design tradition perhaps anywhere in the world. And I think that they, they continue that industry, they're the surviving part of it. And I think as such, they're really important. It's always different from when you, when you originally think it's going to uh, work out. So it can either be, that's great, or Christ, that's crap, that's not what I expected it to be like. Now they're at it again, with a commission to create a London toile. Oddly enough, I thought, oh my God, they've done something that I never thought, you know, would happen in my lifetime, a, a rather wonderful rediscovery of the pattern. Alistair Macaulay and Paul Simmons, for they are the timorous beasties, have been creating their upmarket wallpapers and fabrics from a rather downmarket building in Glasgow's Annisland for 15 years now. Ali's already busy drumming up press interest in the London Twelve, but Paul hasn't even started designing it yet. Right. You've got to kind of work that whole kind of PR thing, really, haven't you? There is something definitely nice about working on something, and um, and then you know having an article about it and then going to the news agents in the morning and, and, and having a look at it definitely, you know, it's quite, yeah, it's quite rewarding. Except that, you know, maybe you look a bit older and you look a bit fatter or whatever it is. Um, you can't do much about that. We were at art school together. Um, and then at that time, which was, I guess, in the late 80s, um, there wasn't really that much in terms of good interior fabrics um, that were different. One of the key things in designing is to sort of um, try and design things that you would like to have yourself. And the only problem being that you know, the work that we wanted, um, nobody else wanted to produce. And um, I guess that's where the, the idea of actually not only designing it for ourselves, but actually uh, producing a lot of the work um, started off. Twile designs originated in the 18th century and showed truthful scenes of life on the land, featuring peasants and landscapes captured in line drawings. Timorous beasties are reinventing that tradition. We've done fabrics like that in the past, but, but purely as in a, to look like a twile, not to be so contemporised. I mean, I was quite surprised actually that no one had really done a contemporary toile for you know so long. I mean, it, you know, contemporary toiles that have been designed have always been replicas of old toiles. This is my favourite fabric here, a favourite toile. Um, it's called um, Peacock Amongst the Ruins, and I think it was designed in 1815. You can see there's two types of drawing that are printed on top of one another. The registration is quite incredible. Technically, just getting these overlaps of, of diff two screens, you know, it's just really quite phenomenal. And these are the sort of things that originally um, uh, inspired um, us to do, do the toile. It was a very obvious advancement on, on a very classic traditional theme, which, which is kind of what we do. You know, we take very traditional source, very traditional repeats and, and, and ideas of working and, you know, whether you want to call it, you know, perverting it or, you know, um, expanding upon it and, you know, you know just, just changing it around a little bit. It's exactly, it's, it's very indicative of what timorous pieces do. 
With only weeks to go before the new toile is supposed to be unveiled, Paul gets busy hunting for images that together will capture the essence of London. The great thing about doing a London toile is that you are genuinely a tourist in London. Uh, so you don't feel as inhibited taking just lots and lots of photos. If you're working on a toile, suddenly everything you see around you, you interpret in terms of, oh, that'd be good for a toile, oh, I wish I had my camera. And, um, and before you know it, you are just clicking away. And sometimes, actually, you, you see things, kind of slight surreal things as well, as a person carrying a huge teddy bear. What I don't like about some of the old Victorian toiles was this false idea of the world. And also, I quite like the kind of joke in terms of toiles being quite a upper class kind of a fabric. And, and I quite liked the idea of depicting uh, more kind of lower class, um, more sort of the underbelly of, of things, but um, um, dressing it up in, 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 a, in, a, you know, in a different kind of way. The gherkin was definitely the first scene that when you thought of London toile, it had to be the gherkin. It's a new icon for London, um, and it speaks to us of now, and it's very fresh, very modern, and actually, it looks great. The shape and the way the windows you know, are shaped in those triangular shapes, it looks so different and new and fresh. Very mundane things are very important as well, you know. How does a pavement kind of look? What kind of brickwork? These are the tiny things that do identify cities as well, because, you know, Glasgow's much more sort of large, chunky sandstone, so brick doesn't look quite the same. Gavin, is there any of the Japanese porn left? Which one are you looking for? Got it. Right, this is the Oriental Orchid paper. You can see how heavy the ink is on this. I mean, it's hand-printed purely because we wanted something that couldn't be machine-produced at all. We have these colour blends that can't be done um, by machine. It can, can only be produced, like I said, by hand. And um, for, from one angle, is you get quite a matte image. You know, you see, the, you see the orchids and you see the leaves, and then depending on how the light hits it, you see the pornographic you know, image coming through on it, which kind of, you know, brings you that little bit closer to the, to the image. Once they say pornograph, you're like, oh, what's, I don't know about that. But once you see it, it's, it all works together well. This is the artwork for the pornographic image. Definitely my favourite one for printing. It's most enjoyable. Also, it's the longest one it takes to produce because it's got the most colours. Um, and the rainbow blend is quite hard to do because you've got to make sure that it's, it's constant and it's always the same, each one. But it's definitely my most favourite print. Why did you make it a lesbian scene? You know, there's a guy in there. You can just see his, um, you can see his bow tie just there, <laughs> or his, his tie. Firstly, it had to be a beautiful wallpaper and then have this other layer, which was, you know, um, just a bit darker, um, you know, a bit seedier, a bit kind of, you know, taking the connotation that little bit further, because we just didn't want it to be very obviously, it's a big porn of wallpaper. Time is starting to get tight on the delivery of the London Toile, Paul has his short list of images to play with, and now he really needs to start designing the toile. Once you've gathered all the information, you know, it helps you in terms of composing things. So you can, you know, you can sort of look at photos like, you know, someone just walking with a mobile phone, um, and then, you know, first of all, start silhouetting it. So you can, so you can sort of, just sort of use the silhouette first to sort of compose the scene. What it's about is about processes. Whether that's a hand-printed process or whether it's a machine process or whether it's flock or a rainbow print or, you know, any of these things, it's really, um, it's really designing for that process. So, for instance, with, uh, with hand print, you get a lovely quality of line um, you get a great sense of scale. Um, you can do basically any kind of scale that you want. Um, and, and you use those, use, those, use those elements to your advantage. You can see, 
You can see there's, you know, it's a bit of a quick line actually on that one to kind of get the gist of the person. Obviously the marks that you make with a pen are incredibly, you know, important. If you just use the photograph and tried to sort of, um, you know, Photoshop it, you just wouldn't get a kind of twile-like quality. You know, our, our twiles are actually, you know, the quality isn't as good as, as, as those originals, but I, I, you know, I'd love to take a year out and, and uh, you know, get it completely perfect. More, more foliage, more you know trees. This was uh, Gavin that works in our studio. We, we, we took a photo of him with a. It's an air gun. It's not a real gun. You? <laughs> Just uh, uh, and it's broken. And there's there's a sort of you know there's there's a sort of two two sketches which will be on the two different screens and that will get printed on top like that. And then I might even have another look at it at that stage and sort of think well it doesn't quite work or you know you just got to keep on challenging yourself and saying right okay I don't care how long I've spent on that if it doesn't work take it out. I wouldn't class ourselves as artists at all because we d we design with with a solution you know in mind you know there's there's always a kind of an end product there which I see as being the difference between you know a designer and an artist. I think compromise is a good thing you know and I, I quite like the challenge of compromise I like the challenge that you know maybe you should be restricted to just two colours and produce something yeah uh, you know something really great out of that um, uh, whereas some people would see it as, as a restriction on your your creative freedom. <laughs> So if we take a look at the winds, the direction is all important to the general feel of the days. There are those cold northerlies bringing that uh, really chill feel to tomorrow. Then the milder airs sweep in from the west across Scotland. Timorous Beastie's Force 10 wallpaper helps make the Strata Bar one of Glasgow's most stylish. I have known Timorous Beastie since I was at art school. I think they were, if I remember correctly, a couple of years behind me. And I remember really, really clearly uh, Paul's, especially Paul's degree show, which was just amazing. It was this incredibly sumptuous eyed velvet. It had uh, all these incredible animals, snakes and uh, beetles and things that were done in this incredible intensity. It was really, really, really incredible. Timorous beasties do sit in the Scottish design tradition, which is the oldest design tradition perhaps anywhere in the world in terms of the industrialised world. We've been producing fabric for a very long time. It's only recently there's been a disconnect because we can't afford to manufacture it in the UK anymore. And it's only the very high end, the very uh, high added value end of the industry that's survived. And I think that they, they continue that industry, they're the surviving part of it. And I think as such, they're really important. It is quite funny, uh, you know, textiles and wallpaper have always had a, a reputation of being completely superfluous. And they are, you know, they are. I mean, you don't actually, but then everything is, you know, apart from, you know, eating fucking and shitting, you know. You don't need literature, you don't need music, you don't need art, you know. Um, these are all add-ons to, to our life to make life more interesting. Unlike many designers, Timorous beasties don't just work on corporate commissions, they also sell direct to the public through their shop in Glasgow's West End. This is the sample book, um, and here we have one of the most popular Timorous beasties design, which is the thistle. Obviously, all the Scottish, they love a good thistle, and um, it's amazing how much the design changes with the different colours that you use. The Grand Thistle um, fabric, I mean that's the, the background for it. And the detail is... Um, it originally sat off as a wallpaper. And there's the detail. It's a beautiful looking plant. The spines and, and the, you know the head on it and, and the way the whole thing's kind of you know put together that kind of like artichoke kind of kind of head on it um, you know it's, it's a beautiful looking thing plus the fact that it's so spiky. This is the the mask screen um, for fabric which was produced maybe about five years ago. Um, when when it, um, Paul produced as a you know a way of sort of doing this really sort of nice traditional thing. 
we are influenced by traditional designs. Sometimes there's a lot of elements about traditional design or traditional textiles that I really love. Sometimes it might be very simple, you know, it might be uh, drawing something um, in quite a traditional way, but just changing the scale or changing the colour. Pattern is it's a very evocative thing, you know, it's, it's I mean, everywhere you look, you know, th there is pattern. There's rhythm in everything that's going on, you know, whether it's cars going past your window or, or you know, the clouds or the way birds fly or, you know, everything around you has pattern. Pattern is very evocative. There's something about pattern that, that I find, you know, quite kind of comforting. Here we've got a big iguana print. Um, this is just, you know, a great design. It's just, you know, amazing to kind of see what's going on. Originally, people would sort of say, oh, how can you have something with snakes on it or lizards on it? This is, you know, I couldn't have that in my house. But it's, it's, it's not about that. It's, it's about the pattern that the thing makes and the, and the structure, which makes it acceptable to have it in, in a private in interior. You know, so you've got that kind of idea of, you know, kind of grotesque being quite attractive. The London Toile design is complete and the fabric urgently needs to be printed if the upholsterers are to get their job done in time. Being on the tools is a nice way to develop your actual uh, design process as well because be being aware of the, um, how the process works helps in, in the design stages as well. It's nice to see a design going from drawing stage right through to the finished piece. Once you can actually sort of peel the tape off of something, then, then, then hang it up and see how it's going to look, you know, that, that's actually a really good kind of feeling. A lot of time designers, you know, they don't get to see that stage. It's the, you know, they just do the design and then that'll be the last to see of it until they see it somewhere else. Originally I wanted to be a mechanic when I started off. I went to college for a couple of years and various jobs, all the rest of them. But when I came in here for my interview, I just thought it's such a good place, enjoyable work. Small company, really nice people, so friendly. And so satisfying that it's, I just, I wouldn't change it for the world, you know. There's a set of traditional colours that go with uh, a twill. Uh, this isn't quite as traditional uh, as they normally are. This is a, it's a lot brighter. The deepest colour, the, the dark red, that, that's still in keeping with the, the whole kind of look, but the... The background colour of this will, will, will brighten it up an awful lot, just to make it a little bit more, a bit more contemporary, a little bit, you know, give, give it a little lift, really. One, two, three, this is not a regular way for printing, you know, there's no courses in this apart from an art school course, so to employ a graduate to do printing, you know, they'd stay with you for maybe like a year. So we wanted somebody who would effectively had no experience in it, because you really can't get this kind of experience, it's... it's it's a quite a rare form of, you know, to hand print like this. I mean, screen printing gets done commercially, but this is quite a rare way of, it's quite a rare process to actually do. Through the 90s, we certainly felt like kind of design lepers, you know, and um, I sort of thought that was a bit of a shame. But in a way, you know, we kind of stuck to our guns and did things that we sort of believed in. And um, at the time, you know, the other thing is that people have very preconceived ideas about things. So, you know, back in the 90s, uh, you know, if you said that you were working on wallpaper, you know, people, you know, would kind of, you know, back off from you as though you were disease ridden. That is actually one of the great things about designing, is to sort of change things around and surprise people. And if someone has a preconceived idea about wallpaper, what you do is you give it back to them, but you give it back to them tenfold. When you're hand printing, anything can go at any time. You know, you can get a hole in the screen or, you know, a wee pinhole that will just suddenly appear or, you know, the, the fabric can... Because when you wet the fabric, the, it starts to move and sometimes it can pull from the tape. But it's all, you know, so far it's all perfectly acceptable.
It's always different from when you, when you originally think it's going to uh, work out. So it can either be, that's great, or Christ, that's crap. That's not what I expected it to be like. This is fine, though. This is good. Originally, when you started designing stuff, it, it would just be purely for, you know, I just want to design a fabric, I just want to design a wallpaper, with no real kind of idea of how it's going to be used, how it's going to be marketed, you know, all these kind of things which have kind of grown with the company as, as the company's got on. You know, you can have like a wealth of designs, but not get them anywhere. You know, so we have, the, we're, we're trying at the moment to get the designs out. The hand printing was flawless, keeping them just about on schedule. I still stay at home with my parents, but once I get my own flat, I'm definitely looking forward to ripping all the horrible wallpaper off and sticking up some lovely timorous beastie stuff. Has to be done. No, can't think of a better excuse, can you, you know, forget discount. The toile has rushed off to Norwich to be upholstered onto modern classics of minimalist furniture. One person who doesn't need a discount is Turner Prize nominee Dinos Chapman, whose artworks sell for six figures and is a fan of Timorous Beastie's work. The reason I like the wallpaper is it's kind of a bloody raw shark test. Um, kind of... The, 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 the patterns are quite kind of... They're quite ominous. They remind me of the skulls that are on the wall. I've always wanted to get some of Timorous Beastie's wallpaper um, since I know Paul. We've always talked about doing swaps. Art for wallpaper swaps, which I haven't given him the art yet, so <laughs> when he sees this, he'll probably remember. The interesting thing about what Timorous Beast is doing is they're not trying to make art, and they're not denying that it's um, designed, but they're just uh, a little bit more interested in how far you can push design. I wouldn't say it's fun, because it's kind of fairly morbid, but it's, you know, it's wallpaper. You tend to ignore it after a while, don't you? And the art. <laughs> In the centre of East London's cool, arty Hoxton, the day for unveiling the London Toile has arrived. Everything is ready. Just. But Ali and Paul still have some finishing touches to do. When they launched their Glasgow Toile, and then it was put forward for Designers of the Year at the Design Museum, I went and had a look at the show, and I, they actually had a piece of that fabric on a piece of furniture, and I thought, actually, it was a quite an interesting idea. and. You know, the time was right to to do something like that. And met on the day after, actually, when they found out they hadn't won. <laughs> so, so, uh, but it was a good it was a good day to start a collaboration. If you try and put it in context of what's been happening in the furniture world and interior design over the last sort of ten or fifteen years, there's been a, a complete rejection of any patterns, any fabrics with any kind of design on them at all. Um, which was you know, a reaction to the ghastliness of what was around before. Inevitably things change and inevitably people start to, to look back at perhaps actually this isn't a rule we should make, that we cannot have anything printed on it. And also there's a kind of confidence that was lacking before, which now is back. This is probably the first time we've actually shown any pattern furniture. I mean, it's a bit sad to have to say that, but it's true. But what will the press make of it? Paul Morley, one of the more opinionated and high-profile pundits, has arrived to see the new London Twelve. Well, I think they're especially attention-grabbing now because for a while we haven't really had this kind of narrative on, on a, in a pattern. I guess we're so used now to patterns actually in a funny sort of way being quite dead, if you like. You know, they're just sort of, you kind of know them, it's a pattern. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually say much. And what's interesting about a Twelve is that it, it is fundamentally a pattern but there are stories being told. It's like hip-hop. I mean, what they've done in a way is a strange hip-hop approach to, to making um, textiles. So, obviously, you know, some people throw together a beat and a, a melody and a tune and it's rubbish. It still needs a certain kind of skill in organising and a positioning. Well, 
I love about this is the way that it kind of opens up the idea that they can be about now, and that what makes the Toile isn't 18th century pre-revolutionary France or all those early designs. What makes the Toile is, is the contemporary imagery. Suddenly we're thrust into actually what makes them exciting and the idea there's all this activity that comes around from your everyday environment. Funnily enough, I don't know whether I could actually sit on the whole thing all the time, because it verges on feeling like I'm sitting on a work of art, you know, that area where this kind of thing ceases to be just pure decoration and becomes kind of, you know, as the charge of art. And the idea of sitting on it and, and having that all around you fizzing is slightly disconcerting. But will Paul Morley's enthusiasm be echoed at the evening launch? It's nice to have something that tells a story of where it's from. It worked well and worked well with one another, so... There's already talk of twelves for other cities, including Sydney. I have a few ideas about what would go into the Sydney twelve, and I'm... Out of all the cities that I kind of like in terms of uh, doing twirls, uh, Sydney is definitely one of them. I mean, the Sydney Opera House is probably the, 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 the first and the, and the biggest iconic building in, probably in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of weird plants and a lot of weird nature. Fruit, fruit bats, fruit bats, kind of, you know, instead of pigeons, you have fruit bats. And the cockatoos and, uh, and the lorikeets. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the ibis as well. This beasties comes from Robert Burns's poem. The whole poem, not the whole poem. <laughs> a cowering, timorous beastie, or what a panic is in thy beastie. Uh, I know the line. <laughs> I'd heard of Robert Burns, obviously, um, and I knew he'd done some poems, but um, I'd never heard of the, the, some mouse poem or something like that, the mouse loose noose or whatever it is. It's a dystopian view of London, in the same way that the Glasgow Tower was a kind of um, fairly hard image of Glasgow, you know, and it's one that exists and it's one that's not really talked about that much enough in the arts, but um, there's, a, there's something about it that's quite honest. You know? But it's great to look at, so that's the key, isn't it? Do you want to look at it or not? We sleek at timorous... Cowering, timorous, timorous beastie. beasties. Oh, what a panic. Is it like Bristy? Bristy. Oh, I thought it was more. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We sleek at Curran Timorous Beastie, oh what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou needna start away so hasty, with bicker and brattle. I would be leaf to run and chase thee, with murder and paddle. And truly sorry man's dominion, has broken nature's social union, and justifies thy ill opinion, makes thee startle. At me, thy poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal.